the arcades are dead. All right, they're not, that's a bit much, and I really hope that arcades can come back in some form once we leave what history will simply refer to as the uncertain time. Arcades are part of the fabric of video game history, and no genre better exemplifies this than the arcade racing game, which lives on today both in the physical locations that are still able to safely operate, and more and more frequently, your house. So what elements does an arcade racing game have that make it so captivating and endearing? and what separates a successful, long-running series like Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer! Remember that one? From a forgotten relic of the past, like Burning Road. Well, let's talk game design. Broadly speaking, arcade is a subgenre of the less specific racing category, and is categorized by certain features that we'll get into in a minute. The other main subgenre is simulation. Games in this category tend to focus on realism above all else, trying to make the most realistic engine noises, car handling, stitching on the leather seats, and the right kind of gravel for the tracks or whatever. You'll know them when you see them. The most successful and well-known example of the simulation genre is Sony's Gran Turismo, where you take actual driving tests and your car selection usually looks less like a poster on a nine-year-old bedroom wall and more like the used listings in the Auto Trader magazine. Microsoft, of course, has its own exclusive racing franchise in the Forza series, which conveniently splits itself into motorsport, focused on the realism of simulation, and Horizon, focused on the less rigid arcade features that I swear we're now literal seconds away from talking about. Although there were obviously early attempts that have since been lost to history, the arcade racing subgenre really owes all of its success to one incredibly important game, Outrun by Sega. The younger lot among you will have to take my word for it, but the impact of Outrun's visual presentation in 1986 cannot be overstated. Side note, despite talking to you like your children, I was minus one years old in 1986, so don't go thinking I'm some old nostalgic granddad. It was Sega's most successful arcade cabinet of the 1980s, thank you Wikipedia, and though I won't bore you with the details, using Sega's revolutionary sprite scaler technology meant that it played smoother and just looked better than almost everything else at the time. Even even though it's in 2D and even though it's old, as we run through this list of the four key elements of arcade racing, keep Outrun in the back of your mind and try and think of how many of these can be found in this legendary classic. Right, I'm done waffling, let's look at some actual game design considerations. Starting with presentation. There's a reason why Sony always has a Gran Turismo trailer ready to go whenever they're showing off new hardware with the PlayStation 5 being no exception. Racing games are possibly the easiest genre to show off graphical prowess. There's a lot of reflective surfaces, a huge variety of non-interactive environments, and a very narrow focus. You make the track, you make some cards, you're done. No complicated enemy designs or interiors or environments, so you can hone in on making the few visible elements you're going to need look amazing. Part of this is actually reflected in their arcade roots. In an arcade, if you're going to gobble up people's money, you need to look attractive. In fact, the automated demos and displays that run when nobody's playing are called attract mode for this very reason. As a result, arcade racers are vibrant, colourful, showy and loud. Some of them had massive, impressive looking behemoth cabinets to make you go ooh and appreciate the experience of playing on something you couldn't, and in some cases still can't unless you're very rich, do at home. I'm sure you've probably heard somebody say before that when it comes to game design, graphics don't matter and it's all about gameplay. Which is a complicated statement that would need an entirely different video to unpack. But if there's one genre where graphics and overall presentation are probably key to the experience, it's arcade racers. Destination. In a realistic driving simulator, where are you going? From here, over that bit of grey track, round that grey corner, over a grey hill and back to the black and white starting line, right? Real world tracks like Silverstone, Monaco, some others that I can't be bothered to Google, are all lovingly recreated with as much accuracy as possible because the point is to make you feel like it's real and you're there. Arcade racers though, not so much. Where are you going in Outrun? Over there. And wherever there is, it's probably brightly coloured and possibly unrealistic. It means we get games like F-Zero GX, with impossibly twisty space-based locations full of fire and neon lights, that let the developers flex their presentational muscles without focusing on realism. Many of them have asymmetric courses, where your goal is at a destination rather than doing laps around a predetermined track. In fact, some franchises like Burnout or The Crew have followed this to its logical conclusion, and ended up in the open world format, letting you drive around a recreation of either a real or fictional place picking up missions like it's GTA. But even games that follow a traditional track layer, like Namco's iconic Ridge Racer, are in a fictional place with interesting backgrounds and setting. Because the act of driving isn't necessarily as involved and complicated as a simulator, you can sometimes let your eyes wander, so having exotic and interesting settings for your races gives the developers an opportunity to ramp up the presentation. Fluidity. Physics are difficult. 
Just in general, physics is a difficult subject. In arcade racing games, the physics are less focused on how to drive a car and more on what you want to do with that car. We touched on this previously, but a simulation racer like Gran Turismo or Forza Motorsport is about the act of driving a car as realistically as possible. Gear changes, racing lines, clipping the apex, other things I don't know enough about cars to put here, other than I once heard the phrase wankle engine and it made me giggle. An arcade racer is about what being in a car would let you do drifting, turbo boosts, ridiculous crashes. To achieve this, one of the biggest differences between an arcade and a simulation racer is the physics engine, the way that the cars control and feel, with the ultimate goal being fluidity. Fluidity is the ability to flow like a liquid from one corner to the next, to drift and weave seamlessly through the opposition or the track obstacles, to snake and slide around the track like a figure skater, or sometimes to blast off like Team Rocket at the push of a button. Physics can make or break a racing game. They're much more important in simulation style games, but even in arcade racers it's important to get it right. In a simulation racer the physics are designed to make you feel as much as possible like you're driving a car. In an arcade racer it's the direct opposite. You want the car to be impossibly responsive so you can throw it into a corner and not have to worry too much about what speed you are going other than maybe letting up on the gas for a second. You want your drifts to take one or two button presses and be so easily controllable that you can just pull out of them at the last second once you're done going sideways around a corner. The reason F-Zero GX gets to be as difficult as it is but still loved by its fans is that although the tracks and the physics might be hard to master and set a very high barrier of entry, they can be mastered. They are responsive enough and you are given enough tools that when you're crashing sideways into another right angle turn, it's because you weren't good enough and not because the way the ships control or feel let you down. If the physics get in the way of your arcade racing experience, they will doom the entire thing. There have been more racing games than I could ever list here, but if I had to bet money on it, I'd say the reason you've never heard from a lot of them is that above everything else, the physics are wrong. Variety. In the actual arcades, variety wasn't all that important because the games were usually situated next to dozens of other, different games, and you fulfilled your varied needs with something else after spending a quick 50p on San Francisco Rush. In today's home arcade racer though, variety has become a bit of a defining selling point. F-Zero GX has its story mode. Burnout has dozens of events that encourage you to blow yourself up in the most satisfying way possible. Need for Speed has Hot Pursuit where you're chased by or do the chasing as the cops. In a simulation racer, your variety comes from the various aspects involved in actually driving a real, actual, proper, actual car. Actually. You can dive into the tuning of your engine, or swap out and modify parts, or compete in real-world events throughout history. In an arcade racer though, it's not that big a deal. Some franchises have over the years blurred the lines. Need for Speed has featured car tuning and modifications on numerous occasions, and although Horizon is a more casual driving experience, it's still built on the motorsport engine, and so it shares its hidden complexities under the hood. Quick side note, it is a good thing that user interface is not a pillar of arcade racing design, because Forza Horizon 4 would be right at the bottom of the goddamn barrel. But for the most part, variety is in what else your car lets you do, and a good to great arcade racing game should have multiple game modes, often with some that are dramatically different to your standard drive from here to over there. Presentation, destination, fluidity and variety. These are what I consider the four major game design elements of an arcade racer. But we're not done. Because now I get to see if you were paying attention in the beginning. Remember Outrun, the game that I said the genre owed its success to? I hope so because I'm about to drop a little bombshell on you. A game that has all of the above in a perfect balance that to me makes it the perfect and greatest arcade racing game ever made. Outrun 2006, Coast to Coast. Incidentally, this is where this video stops being analysis with researched points and video evidence and devolves entirely into this is what Zane likes and he's going to talk about it for a bit. Now I'm not saying the entire video has been a setup for me to just gush about Outrun 2006, but I'm also not saying it hasn't, so uh, <clears throat> I don't need to tell you why it nails presentation in much the same way as the original did, you can see that with your eyes, and if you're visually impaired I shall attempt to describe it to you because you do deserve to experience this in whatever way you can. The sky is most of the time a bright blue. There are beaches, cities, forests, fields of flowers, geographical wonders and a whole plethora of historical monuments crammed into every run, with a saturated palette so vibrant you'll swear you can feel the sun on your face. Presentation of course isn't just visual, the soundtrack to Outrun 2006 is the best soundtrack ever set to a racing game, ever, including, controversially, the excellent F-Zero GX. Please feel free to argue with me in the comments. 
You want destinations? Of course you do. Outrun's got you there too. Each run will take you through various segments of your choosing and you're always going from somewhere to somewhere else. This is one of those the journey is more important than the destination sort of things. You know, zen and the art of game design. But where Coast to Coast really shines is in its fluidity. The physics are hilariously unrealistic and you can enter into a drift by whispering at the brake pedal. The drifts are heavily assisted so all you need to focus on is aiming roughly in the direction you want to go, which means snaking around corners and slipping between the myriad traffic is easy, smooth, fluid. And now you're thinking, all right, Zane, Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast is clearly great in those other elements, but it must lack in variety, right? It can't be perfect. Well, sadly, you are correct. It does lack somewhat in variety. No, wait, no, it doesn't. The game features tracks from two previous versions of Outrun 2, the original that was initially ported as an Xbox exclusive, and SP, a previously arcade exclusive semi-sequel, giving you 30 total stages to drive through. But that's still just driving, right? What if you wanted to do something else, like, I don't know, impress a woman? Good news, there's Heart Attack Mode, where the girl you're trying to impress with your Ferrari shouts out increasingly difficult things she'd like you to do, like drifting, passing cars, hitting a beach ball, making a lovely romantic meal and not just ordering tacos and Uber Eats, you know, classy stuff. Everything you do earns you outrun miles, which you can spend however you want on new cars, new stages, reverse stages, new music, new colours, whatever. This means as you're enjoying Coast to Coast's primary gameplay loop of literally the best arcade racing ever, you're always making progress, just by enjoying yourself, which is brilliant. Brilliant. Yes, alright, I got a bit carried away there at the end, and no, your Coast to Coast experience probably won't be as good as mine, because I managed to buy this when it was on Steam and Sega still owned the Ferrari license, so I could bump the resolution up past 4K, but it is still genuinely brilliant. I think it's only fitting that the four main elements of arcade racing are best typified in the most modern rendition of the original iconic arcade racer. It's nice and poetic. And that is going to wrap up this video. If you've enjoyed it, then please leave a like. If you haven't, then feel free to leave a dislike, I don't mind. If you'd like to see more videos of this nature, then consider subscribing, and I will see you the next time I'm thinking, hey, let's talk game design.